We were the first radio station to play black music on a regular basis. We were the first power station. There were some black stations in the largest cities like New York or L.A. in the inner city, but you couldn't hear them out of New York or L.A. or Chicago or Detroit or New Orleans, as the case may be. We, we, we did it quite by accident. Some uh, black students in Nashville came up to see a guy named Gene Nobles who had the show at this time about night. This was late 1946 after the war and these guys were going to college on the GI Bill and they brought up some of their music uh, and asked Gene if if he would play it. So he put these records on and there were some boogie records there by Albert Ammons and Pete Johnson and guys like that and uh, there were some blues records by Wynoni Harris and Bull Moose Jackson, Roy Brown and he played them. And all of a sudden he started getting all this mail from all over the South all over the Midwest, and we, nobody could read it. I mean, you, you wondered how it got here. So we figured it, it must have to be coming from a black listening audience. In, in the early 50s, I mean, we were, we were just talking to people who really, this radio station was such a, a mecca for them because they could buy things, they could buy records. We had a little record shop here, the Randy Record Shop, became the world's largest mail order record shop right on this radio station. Mm -hmm. Randy uh, later had Dot Records. He started Dot Records with people like Pat Boone and Gail Storm and things like that, which he used to cover black records. Everything that, see, white parents wouldn't let their kids bring black records into the house. So Randy came up with this idea of having Pat Boone cover everything Little Richard did or everything Fats Nomino did, and then he got the Fontaine sisters to do things that Ruth Brown or Laverne Baker did. And he got Gail Storm to do things that other black singers did. And uh, this was, uh, this they would allow. This is, that's basically the whole story of pop music. Don't sure. You think? That's, that's how, you know, you look at the charts today, it's 80% black music with a white person doing it. This is a tune that's, uh I used to listen to this radio station when I was a kid in uh, Indianapolis, and uh, it was from Nashville, it was called WLAC. A guy named the Hoss Man he used to have a little program. He used to play gospel records. And sometimes it was so good I had to turn it off because it scared me because these people got so intense. He got a lot of black in him. It sounds he could be anybody. Robert Jr. Lockwood, Sonny Boy Williamson, Muddy Waters. He's <laughs> got a lot of got a lot of drive in his voice. Beautiful. 